Shalom. Shalom to the elect. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. The power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His name is Yahweh, means He is. And our King, the Redeemer of Israel, the root and offspring of King David, the bright and morning star, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. His name is Yahweh Shai, the one the world ignorantly called Jesus. Let's give double honors to our head apostles from the great millstone that taught us this truth. And salutation, peace to all the elect out there. Eh? Salutation, particularly starting with 144,000 men that will be pushing this gospel in these last days. Some of these men, have, some of these men, have been laboring for many, many, many years. And like I always say, we just came in two days ago, and we came into the labor, the labor of this man. You know what I mean? The Lord brought us to watch this man on YouTube, and here we are. You know, a few days later, we are here teaching, and we just thank the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rekakudash for showing us mercy. Because we was we were heavy in the world, and now he has brought brought us to this glorious gospel as we prepare to meet the second coming of our King, the Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. This is the best gift anybody can give you by bringing you to this glorious gospel, and we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Every day we show appreciation to the Lord. He could have left us in the world. He could have chosen anybody to bring them into this uh, this faith. But he gave us the faith. He gave us the gift of faith to believe in this message. Family, the more you get into this word, you realize that everybody is a robot on this planet Earth. We have no control of what we do, right? The Lord programs you, all right? Like the elect, like he says, he, they were chosen before the foundation of the Earth. And they were given a gift of faith. The time will come where the Lord will activate them. And they will believe this message, and the Lord willing, eh, they will stay to the end. Once you are, if you are the elect, you will going to stay to the end. The Lord, no matter what, the Lord is going to gather his elect. But we just thank the Lord that he gave us this gift of faith, the spirit, which is the down payment. You know, it's a down payment for the promises that he has promised for the hopeful elect. So great things are coming. Great things are coming. And again, if I didn't say it, again, double honors to our head apostles. As, you know, starting with the, uh, uh, the head apostles from the Great Millstone, the elders, uh, the bishops, and uh, again, salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. And we truly appreciate that leadership that is coming from the Great Millstone, especially in these last days. And again, the elect. I pray that this message find you in perfect peace. That's why we do these certification lessons. We go into prophecy. We go through the news and then we link it with what is happening. So we link it with Bible uh, pre, uh, precepts, you know, the, the word of the Lord. Because we know that the Lord told us about these times, the time that we are living in. It was prophesied two, two, three thousand years ago. You know, Ezra came on the scene, what, close to three thousand years or maybe more than that. When Ezra came on the scene, you see, we are living in the book of Second Ezra chapter 15 right now. You see, but we're going to open it up, Lord willing. Let's go to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 3, and then we're going to read the NLT. Let's do the NLT. Mark, Mark 3, 20. Uh, let's pick it up from 23. It says, and then Yahweh shall call them over and responded with an illustration. How can Satan cast out Satan? He asked. Let's look up the word Satan quickly. Adversary, right? The Greek word is what? 
Charles, Charles G. G. 4567, 4567. Satanas. 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 Thayer's Lexicon. Satan. 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 Adversary. One who opposes another in purpose or act. The name given to the prince of evil spirit. An inveterate adversary of the Mosai and Yahweh Shai. So listen, so we know that what? Satan works for Yahweh Shai, right? Satan is one of the sons of the Mosai. Let's prove it quickly. Let's go to the book of Job. Yes, yeah, Satan is Satan doesn't do anything without the Lord sanctioning it. Big example is what? Job, right? Job chapter 1, verse is it verse 7 or is it Job 1? Let me see. Job 1. Job 1 7. Is it Job 1 7? Yeah, Job 1 7. It says here, one day, let's pick it up from verse 6. One day, the members of the heavenly court, talking about all the angels, okay, came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh. And the accuser, who's what? Satan, that's Esau, the self proclaimed white man. He's, he comes in the spirit of Satan because the Lord told us in the book of Job 9 24 that what? The earth. This current system that we are living in, this, this nightmare that we, we're living in right now, is given into the hand of the wicked, which is what? Malachi 1.4. It tells you the nation, and the nation is what? Esau Edom. Esau Edom, he is the border of wickedness, the self-proclaimed white man, the border of wickedness. He is working directly for Satan. He comes in the spirit of Satan, the adversary. That's what it means, Okay. So where have you come? It's not, it says here, one day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh. And the accuser, eh, Satan, eh, we went to the, it's what? The adversary, right? He's, all, he's against everything that the Lord stands for. That's why he takes the natural food that we eat and then he gives you genetically modified. Eh? He's telling you that we don't need women. You see, the relationship between a man and a woman is no longer going to exist in his, his new world order, Right? He says we need what an artificial womb to bring forth babies. That is Esau Edom. You see, that is Esau Edom. He's the adversary. He's against everything that the Lord stands for. You see, the Lord is so bad, he creates his own adversary. He says, I form the light and create darkness. I made peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all this. That's right. The Lord is balanced. He can't just be good all the time. No. You see, his balance, he says a false balance is what? Abomination, excuse me, abomination to the Lord. So he says here, where have you come? He says, where have you come from? He said, where have you come from? He says here, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. And then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? Is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears the most, the power, and stays away from evil. Satan replied to the Lord, Yes, but Job has good reason for, to fear the Mosai. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. Because, yes, that's right. The Lord have to give you permission. You have to give, if someone needs to be to be killed, the Lord have to sanction it. You see, Satan works for the Lord. But I want to read this in the KJV. Eh? KJV quickly. KJV. I don't know why the Spirit lets me here, but family, it, it's all part of the lesson. We will, we will get back into the articles. It says here, uh, Job 1, 7, and Job chapter 1, verse 6, first. Now there was a day when the sons of the Most High came to present themselves the sons, eh, which are what? The spirits in the heavens before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Satan is what? The son. One of the sons of the Most High. You see? It says, and Satan came also. So yes. That's how amazing this whole story is. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's, it's, it's just, we are living in a beautiful time. Yeah, so self-proclaimed white man, that's why he comes in the spirit of Satan. That's why the Lord says what? A kingdom divided. How can, let's go back there. Where is it? Uh, what was that? We went into, uh, where was it? No, 
Mark, it was Mark 3, right? Let's go back there again. Family, please bear with me. Mark chapter 3, because I wanted to make a quick point. So as you know, Mark chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 23 again. It says here, let's, let's highlight this so you know that is the king, Yahweh Shai. The red letter is Yahweh Shai speaking, our king. It says here, and Yahweh Shai called them over and responded with an illustration. How can Satan cast out Satan? He asked, a kingdom divided by civil war will collapse. That's what you are witnessing right now. Satan is divided among its, yeah, that's right, it's divided. The kingdom is falling right in front of your eyes. There is going, there's, we're not going to have, Trump is not going to save anybody. Trump is not going to bring back America. It's not going to, it says that MAGA thing, make America great again. No, that is a pipe dream. This whole thing is co co collapsing because this is the end of a kingdom. There's a new kingdom coming. It says Esau, according to 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 9, we are telling you, it says Esau, self-proclaimed white man, that's right, it is the, he is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. Their rulership is coming to an end. The world is not coming to an end. Yahweh Shai is coming to remove the rulership and set up his, his kingdom, pursuing to, uh, sec, uh, what is it called? Pursuing to Isaiah 9, verse 6. He's coming to build his government. Eh? Federal troops, armored vehicles moving and in mass to Texas as Biden regime prepares to clear out National Guard. Military equipment and federal armored vehicles are being sent by rail to the Texas border as the Biden regime prepared to clear out Texas National Guard troops and state police by force. Here, by force, according to local reports. It says this is uh, from Twitter, formerly known as, no, so from X, formerly known as Twitter. Update reports of military equipment. An armored vehicle moving via rail in Texas. Is the government going to make its move to clear out Texas National Guard troops and state police by force? The battle is not over. It's just beginning. Biden administration has the supreme... What was that? Supreme Court on its side. It will take action to restore federal power soon. You see, you, you see where, where this is going, family? You see where this is going? The kingdom is divided. And uh, we are rejoicing. Because, again, the book of Ecclesiastes. Eh? Ecclesiastes is becoming one of my, one of my favorite. Ecclesiastes, uh, I, I said Ecclesiastes, right? Ecclesiastes, what is it? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. And it says here, finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. But let's get the King James Version. And it says here, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. The end of a kingdom. We are looking forward to seeing the fall of America and the West and the new kingdom wherein ruleth righteousness. Yahweh Shai establishing his kingdom family. That's what we are looking forward to. That's what is coming. You have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. This is all part of the tribulation. Civil war is coming to America. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 15. And Isaiah chapter 19. It goes into what? In, into what the time that we are living in. If they have to use force, family. People are not going to sit back and take it. Okay, majority, the average American, right? American now thinks that the government is not for them. Or see, they say when people have nothing to lose, they lose it all. And we thank the Lord. That is all coming to an end. You know, it's all coming to an end. Now, let's go to the book. Sorry, now let's bring another article. Everybody's talking about the civil war. 
This is coming from end, end time headlines. Putin ally gives chilling warning that Texas border crisis could spiral into no spiral. I can never pronounce this now. Spiral into civil war in America. Spiral, spiral into civil war in America. Please forgive me, family. I don't know why I'm tripping on my words today. It says opinion. It says Dmitry Medvedev. Now let's let's read here the last paragraph here. Medvedev, who currently serves as the deputy chair of Russia's Security Council, released a lengthy statement on X, formerly Twitter, on Friday, reiterating eh, his past prediction that Texas will secede from the rest of the U.S. It's no longer united anymore, fam. This is the divided state of America. Something that the state has no legal ability to do and potentially kickstart a civil war. We are living in 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Family, you must well bring it out. I quoted it already. 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 14. It says here, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. What is your modern day sword, family? People have all type of guns, okay? Your AR-15s, eh? Your shotguns, your Glocks, eh? Your double barrel, family, all type of shotguns. That's right, these are the modern day sword. That's what people are going to use against their neighbors, family. This is what is coming. It said, for the sword and their destruction draw at night, and one people, and eh, you have what? That's right. The blue state against the red state. The federal government against the state government. Neighbors against neighbor family. This is what is coming. This here was predicted centuries ago. Ezra came on the scene. Let me see. When was, let's see something quickly. When was Ezra? When did Ezra come on the scene? Let me see if Google can give me something. Fifty five hundred forty BC. Family, that's many years, centuries ago. 5440 BC, am I right? Yeah, family. That is, you, that's right. And now we are living in it. That's what the Lord says, what? Before it happens, he tells you of it. That's insane. Five four four zero BC. Fifty four forty. That's a beautiful number, man. That's mercy right there. Yeah. So, family, let's get back to Ezra, Second Ezra. So now that's what is happening right now because Ezra saw this, saw civil war. It's a Second Ezra chapter 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 fifteen verse fourteen. It said, verse 50, it said, For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. It said, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their action shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city. And that's what you are looking at. They're going to be all type of what? Blo uh, roadblocks. They're going to ask you, there's a movie coming out, I believe it's April 26th, called Civil War. Yes, family. They're asking questions. What kind of American are you? You see the division? 
He said, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Eh? Your governors, your, 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 your mayors, your, your, your state, uh, what is it called? Uh, 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 your congressmen, your senators. No, they're not going to listen to any of them. People are going to take matters into their own hand because they've come to the realization that the government don't work for them. And you know the saying, when people have nothing to lose, they lose it all. And that's what is coming. This is the division the Lord is bringing. The end of a kingdom. And it says here, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Didn't the king Yahawashai says, through much tribulation, we're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Pursuing to Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. That's what is coming. So yes, civil war is coming to America. And the end of Babylon the Great. When it's all said and done, America is going to be the lake of fire. So don't let nobody tell you that. You should buy a bunker or dig a hole in America and go underground. No, nothing is going to escape this fire. You want you want a, a, a an image? Check out the movie. Uh, I think Terminator Two, where Linda Hamilton. I think he was like in a trance. She was like daydreaming, and he saw America on fire. Yes, yeah, right. From the east to the west coast, from north to south. It's going to be a lake of fire. That is what is coming. It says U.S. moving. This is coming from Haltena. <coughs> U.S. moving nuclear warheads to United Kingdom over Russia situation. The United States is moving nuclear weapons back into the United Kingdom for the first time in 15 years over a perceived threat from Russia. You see, anytime you see a kingdom collapse, Collapsing, you see, they started making decisions that don't make sense. You see, America is the last leg of the Roman Empire. We know Rome came into power, they fell and eh, for a thousand years. They came back through the what the Renaissance in the what the 14th, the 1500. That little season mentioned in the book of Revelation 20. Mm -hmm. That's America right now. It was only supposed to be for a short period of time. And that's the time that we are living in. So right now they are desperate. In their mind, they think nobody's going to stop them. Because the, what we, the mistake that we always make as, as, this, as, as human is that we reach, we, 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 when we reach a certain stage in our life, we think whatever we have accomplished or achieved, we did it on our own. No, we are nobody. The Lord is the one that is ruling the kingdom of men, pursuing to the book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 17. He sets you up and when the time comes, he removes you and puts somebody else there. Daniel chapter 2 tells us, Daniel 7 tells us, he set up the kingdoms. Eh? And America is no different. Okay? And here, listen to this. The, Russia, the Russians, however, are not impressed. One source in the Russian Ministry of Defense told me, the Americans can put all the nuclear bombs they want in Britain None of them can get out of the silos fast enough to be used if we launch our new Sarmat hypersonic missiles. That missile and its 15 warheads will hit Britain in 202 seconds. You hear that? 202 seconds, their missile. This, that is why you ask yourself, why did the Lord pick Russia to be a guard unto this nation pursuing to Ezekiel 38? To take down Babylon the Great because it's the Lord. This is the Lord's movie. 
He made sure that Russia has the equipment, the technology to build this missile. And the Lord, our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to get all the glory. It says those American bombs won't even get out of the silos or off the ground on planes in time. It will already be over for the British. You hear that? That they speak with confidence. That's what's coming from Russia. That's what Putin, you see him like that, cool, eh? He doesn't talk much, but when he speaks, you better take him serious. It's going to be Babylon, it's going to be the meat, Russia, that's going to take down America. It is all written in the Bible. Eh? Let's bring out a quick precept just to make that point. Let's go to the book of, uh, just, uh, there's so many precepts that I can go to, but I just want to go to one quickly. Let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, verse 17, straight to the point. We're not going to... Hmm? Isaiah, it says here, Behold, I will stir up the meats against them, which shall not regard silver, the meats are war, more than they Russia, which, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows, which are what? Their missiles. Intercontinental ballistic missile mentioned here, Samat, they call it Satan too. And eh? it says here, Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. This is what is coming upon this earth. That's why we're telling you, be afraid of the Lord. Yeah, how it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, African Americans out there, the men of the Lord continue to warn you. The Lord is coming to destroy this place, to set up his kingdom. You don't want to be caught in it. He wants to deliver you. You got to seek the Lord while he may be found. He's not putting us out here to be teaching this forever. No, just the way he did it to Noah. Noah preached for over 120 plus years. That's how long it took him to build the ark. And then what? They didn't take heed. Noah was only able to save his household, the remnant in those days. And the same thing is about to happen. Because Yahweh also reminded us in the book of Matthew 24 and 40 or 37, where he says what? It's just going to be like the days of Noah. It's just going to be the days, just like the days of Noah. They're not going to take heed. They said, who, 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 who are these people? Why are they saying that America is going to be on the, the, America is going to be the lake of fire? It will never happen. America is going to go on forever. Trump is going to win the election and everything is going to get back to normal. Continue to maintain that energy. You know, continue to maintain that energy. But we are here to warn you. The Lord says, warn them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Just do what I'm asking you to do, son. Eh? Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, I've made you a watchman unto the children of Israel. Continue to warn them. It says here, the abodes also, no, it says, and Babylon, which is what? America. The glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees excellency. Those used to be what? The wise men. So this, the wise men of what? The wise men back in those days in Babylon. But today, this modern day, you call them the so-called elite. Of this society, your Rothschild, your your Oppenheimers, your Dupont, the one, the actual, the thirteen families that are ruling the world, right? The ones that you don't see, that's right. And the wise men, that's right. The so-called Illuminati. It simply means the light bearers. Okay, right? It said the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency, shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How did the Lord overthrow Sodom and Gomorrah? That's right brimstone fire lasers eh? all mingled up that's how america is going to be destroyed along with the missiles it says it shall never be inhabited you hear that because we're telling you after the the, the fire settle the dust that's why it's going to be a lake or it's going to be a desert let's find out what type of animals are going to live here it says it shall never be inhabited neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation neither shall the arabian your so-called arabs pitch tent there Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Nobody's going to be doing business with America. He said, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant palaces. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. American days will not be prolonged. So yes, 
how Turner reporting this US is moving their nuclear heads to United Kingdom over Russia's situation. They are getting desperate. America is getting desperate right now. Okay? It says a COVID intel chatter about declaration of war in the Middle East. Yes, and Israel is losing badly. Now they want to go against uh, what is it called Lebanon because what they want they want to slowly draw uh, Iran into the war. That's why right. they call Iran the head of the snake. You see, this is how the Lord set it up. The Lord is the one controlling the mind of these kings. You see, he tells you in the book of Proverbs chapter 21. You see, he's directing these men to do his will. The only one you should fear is the Lord. You should not fear Esau, Edom, self-proclaimed white men. Everything he's doing, the Lord is allowing him to do it. You should never be afraid of him. The Lord is controlling this devil. And the Lord is coming, he's removing him. That's right. The, I, the, Maga, forget Maga. Nobody's going to make America great again. We just read it. It's going to be a desert. It's just wild animals are going to live there. And so you see, it says here, I was awake at uh, about 4 a.m. and there was a charter on Intel circuit that the Netanyahu regime in Israel would declare war on Lebanon as early as today. I thought it was ridiculous. I went back to bed, but then I pick it up from here. We know since about January 20th that Israel intended to give Hezbollah Lebanon until the end of the month to move Hezbollah forces north of the Latani River in Lebanon or face Israeli action. The end of the month is next Wednesday, the 31st. Today is the 27th. What is not clear to me is why now? Why the rush? So I want you to know there's an actual official charter on Intel circuits saying Israel may declare war on Lebanon as early as today. So family, we say all praises, honor, and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because the sooner this thing gets off, then the quicker we get out of here. Lord willing, Yahweh Ratazah. You see, we want to get out of here. We want Jacob's trouble. We want the microchip. We want them to bring everything so the Lord can, can do his thing. Eh? Now, this when I saw, saw this, I said, yeah, Esau is very worried right now. You see, because this whole called UFOs is playing it on his mind. Because everybody now have a smartphone. You see, the chariots of Israel are showing up everywhere. That's right. They are not alien. They are not family. Ezekiel chapter 1 tells you that the angels are what? So-called black men. That's right. The so-called, sorry, the aliens are, that's right. The one driving, piloting this ship. That's right. The angels, that's right. They are so-called black men. Big one, just, Jer uh, what is it called? Uh, Revelation 20 verse 10. When the, after the angel reveal, uh, gave the book of Revelation, revealed to John what's going to be happening in the last day. What did John wanted to do? John wanted to what? Bow down. He says, no, don't do that. Don't worship me. Don't worship me. I'm your fellow servant. My fellow, your servant. My, you said, I'm your family. I don't want to butcher it. Let's do this quickly. Let's get the book of Revelation just to show you something quickly. The angels, they are not this green monsters, sorry, the, sorry, the so-called alien. They are not these creatures with uh, a big head and wide eyes. And that's Esau blaspheming the, only the, the angels. Esau have so much to pay for. Eh? The self-proclaimed white men. Oh, man. The Lord, that's why the Lord says he's not going to have mercy on the self-proclaimed white men. Yahweh Shai is so-called black men, dark-skinned men. And he's not happy. He remembered everything they did to him before he went on the cross, the way he was mocked. So all that anger, he's bringing all of it. To, <laughs> that's why I say, you're not going to meet me as a man. Let's go to the book of Revelation just to prove one point. Mm -hmm. The book of Revelation chapter, I think it's 21, 21, 10. Straight to the point. It says here, and he carried me. No, no, no. Oh, 19. Sorry, sorry. So I think Revelation 19. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 10. It says here, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See that do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. He says, Worship the power for the testimony. He says, You hear that the point is here. Thy fellow brethren, the angels are our brothers. Okay, we have not you have nothing to be to be afraid of. Everything that is happening right now, eh? The Lord is going to protect us through it. Jacob's trouble, but Jacob is going to be saved out of it. The angels are here, and this is the ship. 
are, that they are coming. They are coming in ships. Yahweh is coming with his father's ship. Ezra described it in the book of Ezra chapter 13. When Ezra saw, it looks like a mountain. Okay? That's the father's ship. That's the one Yahweh is coming in. And then the angels are going to have their own ship. Family, <laughs> the day of the Lord. Oh, man. We are, we are looking forward to it. We are Lord willing, Lord willing. Yahweh Ratazah, man. You see? And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See that do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the power, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Yes, the angels are our brothers. Pentagon wants America is unequipped to defend from imminent alien invasion. No, they are not alien, they are angels. So, this is what, uh, listen to this. Let's go to the book of Revelation, okay? Revelation chapter chapter 12, verse 7, quickly. Because when the Lord shows up in the midst of Third World War, this is what happens. He's coming with who? Michael, the archangel. It says, and there was war in heaven, which is going to be on this planet here. This is Esau's kingdom. He's the one ruling. Okay, this is the one he's ruling. So when the Lord shows up, all these nations, whatever they are fighting over, whether it's in the Middle East, they're fighting over the oil, the resources, they're going to put their differences aside and they're going to face the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, along with his angel. And this is what, is, 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 this is what uh, um, John was telling us right here in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 7. And there was war in heaven, which is here. Eh? Michael and his angels, because he's coming, he says, Daniel 12, 1. Says what? A time of trouble and Michael is going to stand up and defend the children of Israel. We're also going to get that. It says, and Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, which is why Esau Edom, self-proclaimed white men. Eh? Eh? And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, which is why Esau Edom. Eh? That old serpent eh, called the devil and Satan. They come in the spirit of what? Satan, which deceived the whole world. He gave you sweet baby Jesus, didn't he? He told us that we are, we are blacks, we are Negroes, we are African Americans, we are Hispanic. They all this nation came together, make sure we don't have our identity, right? They took our heritage from us. They put themselves as what? This so-called benevolent. And we are white. Look at us. We are pure. This man is going around dropping bombs on children, babies, killing innocent kids all over the world. And destabilizing government, stealing, pillaging. And he called himself white. He's pure. Let that make sense. He says, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and all and his angels were cast out with him too all your military your what is it called uh, all your drones those are your angels you those are your technologies that you're going to be using to fight the second coming of the lord that's it and daniel said it too daniel had to step in things are going to be so bad for the for us the elect and daniel the lord is going to raise a standard like he says in the book of uh, isaiah 19 no isaiah 59 19 i believe you see, Daniel chapter 12, Daniel 12 verse 1, it says here, it says, and what? And that time shall Michael, we just read that in that, uh, Revelation chapter 12 verse 7, and at that time shall Michael stand up, that great prince, which standeth, you see that? Which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time, which is what? Part of the tribulation. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. These are only, this applies to what? The elect. They were picked before the foundation of the earth. And the elect are going to be doing the thing. They're going to be following the what? The shepherd, Yahweh Shai. The elect are going to be looking forward to seeing their king. Eh? That's what we are waiting for. And we're waiting for this war to start. We're waiting for society to collapse. We're waiting for the microchip to come. These are the things that the elect are looking forward to. They are looking forward to these things coming to pass. Because the closer, the, the quicker these things happen, the quicker we get out of here. Yahweh Ratazai. It's a Pentagon wants America is unequipped to defend from imminent alien invasion. 
So now you know that what? The people are the people piloting this ship are what? That's right. So called the angels are so called black people. These are the angels of the Lord. They are here to protect us. You have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. The US military is not equipped to defend America against an eminent alien invasion. It's not alien. Again, the chariot of Israel. An internal Pentagon memo has warned. A newly declassified document found the Department of Defense, DOD, lacks the resources to track or analyze UFOs or unidentified anomalous, sorry, anomalous phenomena. Find these words, man. Freaking. We can't wait to get our Hebrew language back, man. So here, let's go to the book of... I want to bring something out quickly. Let's go to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, is this 2 Kings chapter 11? Let's show something quickly. So to tell you that, yes... This things that they got. We've, we've always dealt with uh, chariots. When we left Egypt, guess what? Cloud by day and uh, a pillar by night. No, no, no. It's a cloud by night and pillar by day. That's right. That was Yahawashai in the chariot guiding us through the wilderness. Okay? This is not, not, it's nothing new to us. It's not nothing new to us. But Esau is worried. Self-proclaimed white man is very, very worried. Let's go to 2 King. Let's go to 2 King quickly. 2 King chapter 11. Chapter 11. I think we're going to pick it up from verse 6, I think. Just to show you quickly. Is it 2 King? Is it 2 King? Uh, is it 2 King? Please bear with me. I haven't been there in a while. Am I in 2 King? Where... Where is, uh, is it Alicia said, oh, my, my, my Lord and so, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Let's do this. My father, my father, the chariot. Oh, first king. No, no, no. Is it my, no. Please bear with me. Let me see if I can get it through my phone here. Where he screamed, he said, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Please bear with me. I'm coming. Second Kings 2. My goodness. That's something like Second Kings. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It says here, it says here, listen to this. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked. So this is a conversation going on between Elijah and Elisha. Elisha is under study of Elijah. Okay, this is before Elijah was beamed up into the chariot and taken into heaven. Okay, and it came to pass as they, were, as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire. And horses of fire and chariots, horses, family, the, the, is the same thing. Okay? And parted them both asunder. It divided them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into the heavens. And eh? Elijah went up in what? And then here, and Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and ran them into two pieces. Family, these things here have been around us many, many times. Let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts quickly. This after Yahweh Shai rose 
from the dead before he went up before he went up into the chariot listen to this um what is it i said the book of acts right the book of, i think the book of acts chapter acts 1 9 i think acts 1 9 sorry yes so it's here uh, that's right right yahweh but let's go here let's pick it up from verse 9 and when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up in a cloud okay a cloud horse family is describing the same thing chariot it says a cloud a cloud received him out of their sight and while they look steadfastly towards heaven, so now you have all the apostles looking up, looking at Yahweh being beamed up, our king being beamed up into the heavens. As he went out, behold, two men stood by them in a white apparel. Okay, these are what? The angel. And which, and then here, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, telling, talking to the apostles, why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? Who are you looking up for? Hear what the angel said. I follow him. He says here, this same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the same Lord that you see getting beamed up into the chariot, he's going to come in the same manner. Now that will take us to what? Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Let's go there quickly. Because what? The angel told you that what? The same Yahweh Shai that just went up eh, is coming in the same manner. So let's find out how the king is coming. It says, behold, he cometh with what? With clouds. Not just one. Not just one. He's coming with thousands. And I think, I think, is it Jude? Jude one fourteen that tells you. And then I think somewhere in Isaiah 68 also tells you that the chariots of the Lord are thousand times. Something to that effect. I don't, I don't want to butcher it. But it says here, behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye, not just one, clouds, family, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him goes to show you what, yes, there's reincarnation. Because yes, the same Roman, this Roman soldier that pierced the Lord, it's not going to be here. The Lord has been gone for 2000 plus years now. Okay, so it's called reincarnation. That's all. That same spirit is back in a different body. Yes, reincarnation is real. It says here, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. The point is what? The cloud. These things here, family, you have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Esau, self proclaimed white man, he's just a liar. They can never tell the truth. The elite, oh yeah, the elite knows. That has, that's how the Lord is coming. Yahweh Shai is coming. That's how we're going to get out of this place. You see, so this thing here, you have absolutely nothing to be afraid of. The hopeful elect, we are looking forward to seeing the sky covered with the chariots. That's how we're getting, that's how we're going home. That's how we're going home. And that's what we are looking forward to every day. Every day, that's all we think about. Eh? It says here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there, family. I'm going to leave it there. I just want to bring this out quickly. I'll bring this out quickly. We're almost, we almost home, family. Things are happening. Things are happening. And we thank the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Rekha Kodash. We're about to go home. We're about to go home, man. We're about to go home. So I'll leave it there. I hope you all edified. Okay, there's something quick I wanted to bring out just to feed the sheep. You know, just keep you in the know and continue to stay prayed up. Beloved, there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Yes, Jacob's trouble is coming. Yes, we're going to go through the tribulation. But remember, you have the hope. You have the faith. You are looking for something greater than the life, the life that we are living. This is not living. This is not living. This is not life. We want a righteous kingdom. Actually, you know what? I might as well bring it in. Let's go to this here where Apostle Peter says. Second Peter, we're going to go chapter 3, verse 10. Let's pick it up from uh, Second Peter 3, 10. And then we're going to read it and we're going to close it. It says here, first, uh, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. It said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That's why Apostle Paul told us in the book of what? I think is it first, uh, uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, He doesn't need to write to you to remind you because you are watching. You are following the, the men of the Lord. You are following the prophecies. You're seeing what is happening. So you should not be surprised. When the Lord, when third world war start, you're going to be looking up. When the moment Russia gets involved and the missiles are, the missiles start flying, you said, man, the Lord is coming. 
because you know that we're not, he's not going to leave us here. You are looking, actually looking, praying. The Lord is going to come through for us. Yahweh Ratazah. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. America again, the lake of fire. So don't invest in America. Seeing then that all things, sorry, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Okay, dissolved with what? Fire. What manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? That's what we are doing right now. This is the holy conversation. All right? We're talking about God, focusing on God, praying, fasting. That's why everything that we do, we are living in the spirit. We tried our best in this vessel. We know that we're never going to be perfect on this end, but we're never going to go out of our way to commit sins. Oh, because I have grace. You know, I have liberty. No. If anything, you are doing the things. You are fearing the Lord. Because family, if you fear somebody, you're going to do things that are pleasing to this person. Because you don't want to get into trouble. It's that simple, right? It's a seeing then all that these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? We need mercy. We want to be delivered. Eh? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of our power. We are looking forward to reuniting with our King Yahweh Shai. Eh? The biggest family reunion ever. And you don't want to be part of this? That makes no sense, man. It's a looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of our power, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. It says here, nevertheless, I love this word, we, according to his promise, promise of what? Salvation, new bodies, the Lord's statutes and commandments in our hearts, ruling with Yahweh Shai for the first thousand years and beyond. That's right. You don't want to miss that. It says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for what? A new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. No more LGBTQRSYZ. Eh? Your food is going to be clean. Your air is going to be clean. Eh? Family, nobody's going to take your land. You're going to actually put your head down. No more siren. Nobody's going to pull you over. Nobody's going to ask you for ID. Identify yourself. Nobody's going to ask you for passport. Eh? Family, all that is going to be done away with. That's what we are looking forward to. No more working. That's what we are looking forward to. Brakata, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, I will leave it there. And I hope you are edified, beloved. Shalom.